Okay, we're back on the True Tone radio. I'm not quite happy with the performance of this. It seems like that on weaker stations, the, the audio is sometimes garbled and distorted. A couple of YouTube members commented on my last video concerning what can cause that. Their theory is that the uh, local oscillator is being modulated by a 60-cycle hum. And that hum is, of course, making its way through the mixer and IF stages and on out through the speaker. And they're telling me what commonly can cause that problem is a leaky coupling capacitor between the tuning condenser and the chassis. Since the tuning condenser has to be at what they call RF ground, well, according to the schematic of this set, the tuning condenser is connected directly to the chassis since this is a direct full-blown hot chassis set without a floating ground but I'm going to do a little more experimentation with this and see if I can improve the condition any someone on ARF suggested that uh, this Admiral schematic could be very similar to this True Tone set and we know Admiral made this record player radio combination and indeed this diagram is very similar in fact the original diagram I was using on the True Tone from Nostalgia Air was very difficult to read and that diagram used a resistor in place of the field coil and obviously we know this set used a field coil and the power supply well this Admiral diagram does show the speaker field coil they show a 60 micro, excuse me, a 50 microfarad cap for the input filter and a 30 microfarad for the second filter. So we'll correct those problems before I had two 30s in here. And when I added the resistor in place of the field coil, I temporarily tacked a 68 across the second 33 microfarad cap to com com combat the uh, hum problem. And it also appears that this particular radio was made using both a floating ground and a full-blown hot chassis version like this is. In fact, there's a note on here saying what connections to jump and what com components to omit if you're dealing with the uh, hot chassis set. Okay, looking at this schematic, they have an electrolytic capacitor C9A is a 50 microfarad and C9B is a 30 microfarad which is basically your standard AC-DC filter capacitor values so instead of, ha instead of having the uh, 68 microfarad shunted across the second 33 microfarad I just went ahead and put the 68 in place of the first capacitor which I originally had as a 33 and then left the second one alone as a 33. On the original schematic it showed both of them as 33 microfarad. And looking here at the tuning capacitor you can see they have a copper braided strap that runs from the capacitor down to the chassis. And I took a look at the original speaker and I found another small tear in it that I missed the first time, so I'm waiting on the glue to dry for that. And we're probably going to put the original speaker back in here once that glue dries. Well, now it sounds pretty good. Of course, we still have that little bit of filter home, which should diminish once I put the original field coil speaker back in. In verse 16, I heard the size of their arm. There's the really low-end wheat station. And I'd really like to know what that chirping is. Obama and Hillary Clinton are both Democrats and want us the same thing for the country that the relationship between their work requires a great deal of time and energy for very well, there it is again in all of us 
This message presented by the Mississippi High School Activities Association and the Mississippi Athletic Administrators Association. Be nice if they were playing that type of music in, right, in its entirety instead of the intro to a talk program. About your home, the maintenance repair, just switching it up, changing it out. A mind that Hillary's running for president in 2016. None whatsoever. Okay, we got that one out of the way quickly. Now let's start with perhaps the most significant revelation in your book, one that could. Okay, here we are back to the old speaker. I patched it a little better and rewired it. And as you can hear, not nearly as not not nearly as much hum as what we had with the PM speaker. Cone speaker would sound better, but that one don't sound too bad for what it is. Okay, I've done about all I can do, I believe. I went back to the original speaker, temporarily patched up. It will be reconed one day. And I upgraded the filter capacitors as per the second schematic diagram. Instead of 230s, I used a 68 and a 33 microfarad. And I resoldered a few questionable cold solder joints from the factory. And hopefully that'll take care of the problem. And here we are back together. Doesn't sound too bad. But just a few moments. I wish I was older. When I was, uh... And I said, well... And no garbleism. I know you were down there every day. Yeah. I used to go in and drop off. Go to livingassistance.com. Livingassistance.com. Okay, and we're even picking up the hard-to-get station that's about 35 miles away. It's a black gospel station now, but it used to be a quality AM station that was locally owned. In fact, they hired some of the old local DJs from various other stations, and I believe in the morning time they played big band standards, instrumentals, that type of music. And then in the afternoon, they played classic country, and on the weekends, they played oldies rock and roll, and they actually had real DJs that took requests and played a wide variety of music. Well, then the original owner of the station passed away, which seemed to be one of the few remaining radio station owners left who actually cared about radio instead of caring about money like so many other radio station owners do. Seems like with most everybody else, the, the quality of programming doesn't matter. It's that bottom dollar that matters. But this guy, I think, was an exception. But anyway, when he passed away, it wasn't too long before his son, who took over operations, pretty much called a surprise staff meeting one day, fired all of the DJs, and told them their services were no longer needed and they flipped to a black gospel format. And it's been that way since 2005, I believe. And it seems that uh, the quality of programming, of course, is not what it used to be. And the overall quality of the station is not very great. A lot of the content sounds like it was recorded on a dollar store tape recorder. Now, it's just sad to see how AM radio has gone to pot. I remember when this station first hired all of the uh, local DJs, people were writing letters to the editor of the local newspaper praising the station, 
because finally there was something decent on AM worth listening to again. And before he hired these guys, he was only running the station like for three hours in the morning playing instrumental type music. But when he hired the uh, three or four old DJs that used to be employed by other radio stations, the station really took off and got back on track. Well, when they flipped it to Black Gospel, there were just as many angry letters to the editor of the local newspaper, but that didn't, of course, that didn't change things any. And also we'll have full coverage... Okay, just for fun, let's take this radio up on the patio and plug it up outside and get it away from all these interference-producing devices in this shop and see if it does any better. Okay. And getting signals that as recently as this week. And in fact, the president planned. sound bad at all. Jedi texted it to him. Now, can we please be done with the radio portion of this? In the next installment, I would dearly love to move on to the record changer part of this. Okay, there you go. Thanks for watching. We should finally be done with the radio. Once again, a big thank you to those who offered advice in the last couple of videos. You know who you are. And we'll get back on this again just as soon as possible.